Hi everyone, this is Johan Merlo aka Todd from Root Gaming. I've been thinking for some time about making strategy videos. Uh, this is the first video I'm making, a PVC between myself and Reborn for You, played on any ladder, uh, a 13, 7, 37 minutes long game in which I will try to cover a lot of the important details of playing a long game versus Zerg in a split map situation. So let's jump into the game. Okay, so uh, I think I will focus mostly on the view of the Protoss. Uh, I'm no real Zerg expert, but uh, I might give some opinions here and there about what to do as a Zerg. And I think this Zerg did a pretty good job of playing good macro game against me. But uh, really, the most of the advice that I will give, I think, will be about Protoss uh, play. So I go for the very standard 9 pylon below the ramp. Uh, you cannot okay it covers the whole area here to make potential buildings and I scout right after very standard so far and uh, I don't you should never have too much of a precise plan going into a game like this uh, depending on when if you ladder or if you play a tournament game uh, it's really on the go uh, by that I mean I will go for forge expand but from there depending on what happens I might choose to do two completely different things so I really like to take a third base and play macro game against Zerg, even if a lot of people consider that really hard. On Daybreak, uh, I find it really hard to all in, even the Immortal Sentry all in, because if you attack through there and they flank here from the side, uh, it's going to be very hard uh, yeah, to get the win, to get the perfect clutch force fails that will allow you to win. If you miss one, then you lose. And uh, I don't really like that. So I go for the 16 Nexus. I did scout that his pull was thrown down at 14. Uh, a very good way to figure out at what time the... Okay, I will come back here a little bit. So I can explain. So, okay, this is what I see. I'm at 14 supply right now and he throws down his pull right now. So that means he threw down a pull at 14 as well. That's a very good way to know. And uh, you can also like figure out kind of the time as well. Uh, in this game, it was two zero three maybe. And then uh, I didn't see any drone going out, so I'm not very worried about the potential hatch block. Uh, by the way, this is my first video, so don't hesitate to give me a lot of feedback. Uh, if there is good feedback, I will probably make another one. Okay, now he does send a drone at his expansion and. Uh, the standard time would be 2.45 to throw down the second hatch, so I didn't really have to block it too much before that. But sometimes they cut one more drone to try to make it earlier. So now I blocked for as long as I could, and just before my probe dies, I make a pylon. Very important, always make the Nexus at home before throwing down this pylon. So now I make I made six, Nexus 16. Uh, his links are going to come out, when he goes pull 14, around 3.34, they should reach down there. So now I didn't make more probes, I made the forge as soon as possible. Uh, I scouted that he was making his hatch here, so of course I cancelled the pylon here, not to spend too much money for nothing. The, this pylon was basically going to be useless. And now I make this pylon here, which will allow me to completely wall off here in case he chooses to play aggressively in the start of the game. So after the forge, I did go up to 18 probes with one nice chrono boost on them. And now I'm going to make a cannon in a pretty good position, exactly in the middle. Uh, I'm trying to confirm if he's making a third hatch, very important. And now this probe is basically staying here to make sure no links get in. <coughs> Excuse me. So I, I do confirm the third hatch. So I'm going to be safe for, for a while here. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, I'm going to start chrono boosting a lot of probes, basically as soon as my second Nexus finishes. I uh, did throw down two gases, maybe a bit late this game. Okay, I go for the cybernetic score. Since I know I'm going to be safe for a while, I do not need to perfect well. Otherwise, I could have made the core here, but no, I just make it here. Uh, if links get in, I have time to wall here with a pylon or put a probe in here. And I will be perfectly safe. Uh, what I like to do usually is to put three and three at the gases immediately. Do 16 as soon as possible in the main. So do you see, this is going to be the 16th probe. And then as soon as this probe is made, I rally my main nexus to my 
natural expansion. So from now on, all the probes are going to go here. Uh, first the lot is out, it will allow me to take control of the Zen Naga Watchtowers, uh, which really is very important in this matchup to do at a lot of times throughout the game because Protoss really lacks scouting, we don't have overlords. Uh, if you send a probe out on the map, it will most likely die. The Zerg really wants to drone up in start of the game, he will only have four links out on the map a lot of the time. Even if he has six, you can just hit and uh, pull back all the time with your Zealot and you can kill a lot of them. So very important here, I want to make him as scared as possible of a potential attack and maybe stop droning for some time. Uh, I throw on his targets and a very important thing as well, not to get supply blocked here. So now I take my two gases at 6.30, 6.30. Uh, this has become the very standard timing to take two gases at the expansion at. You should almost always do it around this time, otherwise it's a big tell that you're going for a lot of gate and some kind of push. So I'm, I was scouting around here. I, I really wanted to take a, a third expansion very early in this game, so... Uh, I scouted around here for, to see if there was any links or overlords with this stalker. Because I really didn't want him to be aware. Okay, so he does see the pylon. So he, he actually got pretty lucky here. Nobody usually ever has an overlord around here, but... Uh, if he hadn't done that, he would have been playing completely in the dark here. So now he saw the pylon, he's probably... Pretty sure there's gonna be a quick third or something like that. So the very important point of this build is to wall perfectly here so that uh, links cannot get in and units in general so that you can have a safe base even if he chooses to be aggressive. Because I'm only on one gate right now and I'm gonna be getting two void race out. So I did kill another overlord here. I'm gonna be able to kill this one. And I, when I kill those overlords, I keep in mind that he's most likely there is a good chance, at least, that he might be supply blocked for some time, which is very good for me. I want him to be supply blocked as much as possible. A lot of people, they like to wait and hide their Stargate units. But uh, with this build, really, you should go as soon as possible to try and kill those overlords to try to supply block your opponent, to slow down uh, his macro game. Okay, I throw down more gates. I'm going to be on six gates total. Second Void Rays on the way. And... Uh, Okay, now I do, I do see that he's making a lot of links. I'm guessing speed is on the way, but I'm gonna have those, all those gates to be able to hold. I already have two cannons here. I, I have only one here, but I have this nice wall. And uh, this Void Ray, he's scouting around to find potential overlords. Here is a, a position you will almost always find an overlord. Here, I killed it in the start. Here, sometime. Uh, here, sometime. So now I didn't find any overlords, and I'm pretty much flying around with my Void Race, trying to find a potential force base to cancel, because uh, it's only 9.30 right now, 9.40. He cannot have uh, tier 2 units since he went for a quick third hatch. Okay, he does try to run by here with slings, but I saw it and I only lost one probe. So my two Void Race now, basically, they will be followed by Phoenix and my Void Race, they will try to kill a little bit of units. Uh, I know I'm not going to kill him with those, but I might do some damage. And this Phoenix's job is to scout to see what tech path he's going for. Uh, usually either Hydralis Den or uh, Spire or Infestation Pit. In this game it's Infestation Pit. And I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be able to take it down immediately, which is very good for me. You see they charged up, they do so much damage. And uh, this Phoenix just making sure there is no other building. Some very smart Zergs like Violet sometimes they make a Spire. So he kind of gives me one Queen. And in the meantime, uh, I should be starting to add a robot pretty soon, but first Twilight Council always to chain those upgrades. And uh, I'm going to be adding a lot of gates as well to be safe against everything. I'm only on six gates still, but uh, since I have my third and I'm making a lot of probes, I'm going to start to have a lot of cash. So now I, I did kill one of the Evo before the one attack finished. I get the other one and I'm going to get the Sword one as well. Very good for me here. I'm getting blink in the meantime in plus two. And uh, yeah, my units are really well walled off everywhere. Like you see, they are like next to four cannons. Here I got two cannons. I'm just very safe at home basically. Keep doing some damage here. Uh, very important not to overextend here. So I pull back now. This hatch did finish in the meantime, so I'm gonna go for it. And uh, this game I choose to make four Phoenix behind this, but if you make just one or two usually, it can be okay as well. So now I'm going to add a lot of gates. I know I'm really ahead now just because of all the damage I did. Uh, I basically rushed 
to seven, oh, uh, 69 probes, I'm sorry. And he has 74 drones, so I'm really ahead right now. Uh, and by ahead, I mean usually you will be very far behind the Zerg economically, so no, I'm not per se ahead, but uh, compared to the, to the usual situation, it's much better, it's looking much better for me than it will be at this time. Okay, Robo going down. All these gates, uh, I'm gonna go up to nine gates total? No, 11, sorry. So now I do see the infestors, I make them use some energy. I only lose two phoenixes, uh, not the end of the world here. And very important, pull back with my void race, not to lose them. One last Zergling gets killed. And now I'm gonna try to take a fourth, so I can have my fourth before him. So, I mean, maybe not the best choice here, but uh, I could have committed most likely with two, just added one more Robo in the Robo Bay and do like a big Colossus timing and kill him. But very good Zergs, I don't like to commit too much against very good Zergs, just because they're gonna be able to hold you with like 20 Infestors. Uh, this has happened a lot to me lately, I've been trying to play very aggressive against Zerg. Everybody tells me not to camp and stuff, so I try to attack all the time. But uh, it's very hard against the top Zerg. They just make a lot of spines, they camp, you attack, they fungal, they spine infested, and then you lose everything. They have Corruptors as well. So I just wanted to play it safe this game and try to micro some. Okay, so now even if I know uh, that he has Infestors, I did place this avoid right here just because he's most likely not gonna know that he's here and if he throws down a hatch it would most likely kill it instantly which would be very good for me if I can at least get one cancel or even kill it before he can cancel. Uh, I'm gonna transfer a couple probes to my force, you see I just leave 16 here. I'm actually pretty impressed with my saturation this game, it's been a very clean game for me. Okay so I do add a second robo and basically I'm gonna enter this dropping mod in this game. So now I see that he does attack, he has a lot of infestors. 16 in total, but a uh, big mistake by him, I think he spammed all those infested turns egg uh, before sending his army in, so basically they're all gonna die and then he sends his army in, if I remember right. So now I basically, I have all these gates and they're really gonna help me in these fights to hold. I also made a lot of cannons, very important. And uh, I had a second forge, I make a war prism. And I was gonna make thermal lens first, but I think after thinking some, uh, I did make warpism speed first. So now I overextended. I felt like he had no more energy and I could blink forward and kill those infestors, except he still had a bunch of links and roaches waiting up there. And uh, he had one or two fungal, which he used on my units and he killed a lot of them. So now uh, I lost a few more stalkers than I should have here. Yeah. Uh, there is no Templar archive just yet. I think I take to it later on. For now, I really just want to get a couple of war prisms and start dropping everywhere. I will also start working on a fifth precision. Very important not to have too many cannons and just one pylon in a place. You see, I try to really put a lot of pylons pouring all my buildings. You don't want to have just one pylon pouring all these, for example, two is way, way better. So now I'm going to get the cancel on this hatch. It's, this is what I was talking about earlier, just by leaving this void right here. Does he cancel? He does cancel. Two Corruptors come. I notice it immediately. And uh, I'm gonna click on the one that has the least HP. And then on the second Corruptor and then on the drones. So I got three units here for just one very good trade here by me. Uh, those Zealots that I had in my army, they are gonna become useless in a big fight, in a Death Bolt versus Death Bolt fight, 200 versus 200. So I filled my War Prism with them. In the meantime, uh, I'm getting charged, adding a Dark Shrine and adding a Fleet Beacon, all of those things. Just because I'm gonna start dropping now and DTs will come in very handy. So now I'm basically placing a War Prism here in this corner, ready to drop at any time. But uh, at first I was gonna drop immediately, but I don't. I really don't like to drop and uh, basically start warping units and not do something else. Because if I do that, it just sends his whole army here and cleans it and it's not cost effective at all. So I was basically now waiting for another War Prism to do a, two, a dual drop. So now I'm three attack, I'm starting to work on Plasma Shield and Armor. My Dark Shrine is on the way and I'm gonna start working on a fifth base as well. Okay, so this is a very good trick that, uh, I don't know if we can only call it trick, but it's just SimCity that I've been using for my additional bases, uh, usually a fifth and a sixth or even a fourth base. 
You just surround your nexus with buildings so that it cannot get sniped by zerglings. I should have actually notice this. So now I do see those blue laws morphing. So I know it's going to be much harder to attack. And here you can see, I just tried to wall this as soon as possible. And also, yeah, very important. Since uh, you don't have that much scouting, you should always have the control of, the, of your Zen Laga Watchtower on this map and cover to the two paths here. Uh, I didn't do a very good job of that so far, just one of them, and I guess I can see his blue dots here, so I know he's still here. Uh, yeah, he does kill this base, I could have cancelled, I guess. And uh, in the meantime, I started my mother ship. So it's very difficult for him to attack right now, even if he has blue dots, I'm guessing he only has around 9 or 10. Let's check. He only has 6. So even if he was to attack now, I can just make a bunch of Archons, and then I'm gonna be on still 11 gates to be able to warp units 11 by 11 and defend. So it does pull back here. And uh, where? Okay, there it is. My second warpism, I'm gonna fill it with a couple units here and start dropping in two places at once. And I'm gonna remake this base with the wall I was originally going for, and you can see this is very clean. Uh, my upgrade's still on the way, and uh, I'm making Mothership, very important, you don't make Mothership here if you get attacked, and then he sees that the Nexus is making Mothership, I guess in this situation it doesn't have enough, but sometimes it will happen, and uh, he sees that you're making it, he can see that with the animation, he can just basically get a cancel on your Nexus, or I mean kill it, and then uh, if you lose Mothership like halfway through done, this is very bad, so I made it at one of the Nexus in the back. So now I'm, I'm doing this in order. First drop here, I'm not expecting to do much with this one. But uh, with this one, I was really st hoping to stop his economy a bit more. But then in the end, as soon as I start dropping, I see he has a couple spines. Thank God, uh, I have three 1-1 one -one units, which are very good. I mean, spines don't do that much damage against those. And uh, now I see that his army was kind of out of position. I mean, I knew his bulldogs were there and they are very slow and the infestors are not too quick either. So no, I just went for the hive here. And here I went for the great spire, which I got. So even if he has already has bulldogs, okay, now I see the bulldogs going down there. And I know that this army has some time to snipe this base. But this is a very risky move. If, if I get caught here, I lost. If I get caught with this army and lose all of it, uh, I think this is over. So now I'm going to leave this DT to keep on doing some damage to the spine crawlers. This war prism does get out, and I got his hive as well in the meantime. So very good trade here by me. Units lost. He's at 10,000, I'm at 8,000. In a split map situation like this, you might think that supply or workers or whatever is telling you who's winning, but uh, I think units lost is a big tell. Uh, he did lose a couple drones as well. He's on 60, okay. He just went up to 70, I'm 74. So better economy here for me. Uh, he has a bit more of a bank, but not by much. Gas-wise, uh, it's much better for me. So that's very good. It's going to allow me to make a lot of Archons. So now I go for another drop here, but never one drop only, remember? So I go for the other one here. In the meantime, this DT is guarding this base. I know he basically just wants to kind of tilt attack. I see him breaking the rocks here. So I'm going to be preparing for this. I kill my own sentries. They're going to be useless in this fight. And I add a lot of Archons to my army. I already have one Vortex. In the meantime, I target uh, with priority the important buildings. So now I didn't even have time to make adrenal glands. And uh, I got this base as well. So I'm in a pretty good position right now, but I can still lo lose the fight very hard and lose the game. I'm on 3 to 2 upgrades. Uh, problem, Storm was a bit late. So now I didn't have Storm yet, and he spammed a lot of infested immediately. So I decided to sack this base. I just transferred probes here or something. And uh, what will happen very often, if you wall like I just did here, is that you can't transfer anything from here or here to here, because I have a wall here, so they will go through the middle. So I might have to kill one of those gates later on, but not just yet. And uh, yeah, in the meantime, those units keep doing a lot of damage. I saw he brought his queens as well, and that's very scary, because he has a lot of transfuses. But upgrade-wise, right now, I know I'm really far ahead. Just because I'm 3 2 against 0 0 air, uh, his queens only have one range upgrade. So now I decide to go for it, but uh, yeah, not the best engage here by me. And I'm just going to try to get a good vortex with my mothership. I did feedback some of the queens that died instantly. And now he ends up targeting my mothership with all of his corruptors. And I figured uh, it, it would die very fast if I don't do something. So I vortex the corruptors, but then 
because of that, all the bulldogs were shooting, and then now the infested terrans basically crushed my army. So now I was, I was actually about to win. <laughs> I remember this part just because this is so hard to deal with. And uh, I saw I was losing this fight. I didn't want to lose those two colossus and my mothership, so I pulled back. And I still have a lot of economy, so I'm go just gonna try to make a lot of units here and uh, possibly kill this army since he's really out of position right now. He's on my side of the map with all of those units. So now he tried to do... I'm not sure this was right. At the time I thought this was right. Maybe if he had sniped the Nexus. He spams all those infested just because he has a bunch of energy. And now he's gonna send those infestors back with his army, but they are not gonna have uh, much energy. So now I did warp a lot of Zelos to try to buy me some time against those infested Terrans. And uh, I'm planning on engaging this army as soon as I spent basically almost all of my bank. So I need to be very careful, camp down there. And I will try to do a two-front two attack. Two-pronged attack. So I'm warping a lot of units there, down there as well. And I will attack from two sides. Uh, I did remake a whole bunch of Templars. I really want to have enough feedbacks to feedback everything that has uh, a decent amount of energy. And here, I can't really do any more ass anymore. I mean, it's good to do war prism and all that stuff, but now the priority is really defending this attack to try and win this game. Oh, I didn't have time to finish my upgrades. So now I'm almost done spending my bank, and now I, I choose to go for it. See, I have these units up there. And now I'm just going to try to get a good vortex once again. I get a couple of brood lords and infestor. She does snipe my mothership really quick, but I get all of those units. And after that, I can get into the vortex. So units lost, I think I was actually behind at this point, but now look at this. Just got 3000 with this uh, Archon toilet. And I'm just remaking mothership as soon as... Okay, poor trust actually, the one Nexus that has the least HP and that is the least covered by cannons. I used to make the mothership, I guess you will not expect that. But there yeah, are uh, links, a lot of links attacks at this point in the game is very common just because it doesn't cost him much and he can do a lot of damage. So I still have this War Prism here, this DT Guarding, this expansion. And uh, I have this one expansion still running, this one, not much minerals left, I should transfer this down there. And uh, when a Zerg does an attack with Infestors, like he did before and spams Infested Terran eggs, uh, you can be almost for sure. Uh, certain that he will do it again. That's why I started warping here. I was pretty sure that this would happen again. Him sending infestors down there and spamming infested Terran eggs just to try to kill my Nexus or lower my economy. So I'm just gonna leave all those Templars down there ready to storm in case trouble comes. I'm re-adding this expansion. Very important here to wait for my mothership. I did remake a forge so I'm gonna get plus three armor. And I think I'm in a decent position right now. I mean, I know it's going to turtle to get the same army once more, but uh, I know that, that economy-wise, he doesn't have a main. His natural is pretty much mined out. His third is probably almost mined out by now. He only has this one base in the middle. Uh, this one is mined out for me. I have this one almost, okay, I guess not so new anymore, but there is a lot of minerals. And this, this one as well has a whole bunch of minerals as well. So we, we can take a look. Yeah, this one is not doing too well, he's been mining on it for some time. His third is completely mined out, he's in his natural, he got a couple of patches left. So now I need to basically mix as well as I can, and uh, I don't think I did the best job of that, just because I made so many stalkers, and uh, um, they're, gonna be, they're gonna end up not being very good against many broodlords and many investors. I need much more Templars than I have now. So my mothership does come out. Just gonna clean this DT down there. Adding one more gate. How many gates? Are there? Thirteen. Fourteen with this one. Eh, not bad. Uh, since we've been fighting so much, I've been spending a lot of my minerals. So I don't have that much of a big bank anymore like I used to. Okay, very important things to do with the mothership, not to auto-lose a game against a smart zerg. You need to have one observer following the mothership at all times. And uh, you need to have a war prism as well on it. Imagine how cool it would be to be able to warp with your mothership in, during the fights. That's basically what it allows you to do. So I'm going to be getting uh, one war prism just to follow my mothership uh, pretty soon here. It keeps getting rid of this DT. I try to drop here. I mean... I'm not expecting he, this to do much, but I want to get rid of this supply 
And if I see it doesn't have enough spine here, I just swap a lot of zealots, and since they are so well upgraded, they're going to be able to, to kill a bunch of things anyway. So now all I got was a queen. I don't know, I was kind of confident to move out just because I'm almost maxed and I got also my upgrade just now and I really don't want to let him take this one otherwise I'm afraid he's going to get way too much units. So now you see the Warpism and the Observer. I need to be careful to stay around with my Templars around my mothership otherwise he will basically just instantly neural it, use double Vortex and after that uh, there is almost no chance for me to win. So now I was looking with this mothership to potentially drop and kill something but there was no hole anywhere. I mean, he has like so many spines, spore, and here too. So at this point, I'm just basically going to go home with this war prison. Just because there is nothing to do here anymore. I already did a lot of damage. Instead of uh, suiciding this DT into this, uh, I might as well just save it and make an Archon back at home. Researching the shields, level 3. I saw he was trying to creep spread here, deny this immediately. I left two Templars here in case he sent a bunch of uh, Infestors down there. And uh, very important, I need to keep control of this Zenlaga Tower if possible. Why do I not have a DT up there? And uh, you see my building positioning also very important here. Uh, I put all the very important production facilities in the back of my main. That's like the least accessible place for him when he goes Bullard Infestor. Uh, what is he going to do? Really send his Broodlords there? That wouldn't be very good. I could just kill him straight up. Uh, and Infestors as well, if they go so far out, they would just die. So here they are very safe, only against potential League run by. Uh, they, this could take damage, but if he drops, I can just warp units there. And if he goes through there, my army is here covering all the time this path. So I'm, I'm just fine here. Okay, now I, I think he did something very smart here. And I should have had at least an Archon at the Zenlaga Watchtower. So now I kill all those changelings by right-clicking. But as soon as I gain vision, he's already in position to spam Infested Terran and get a very good engage. So now the Concave is not very good here for me. Uh, you can see that my Templars, I have only 9, when I should have had at least maybe 15. So I start storming, but I'm slowly running out of storms. I move a little bit back into those cannons. I will, I will even slow down so that you guys can clearly see. I do get feedbacks on those queens. And I uh, put a warp prism in position to potentially warp a little bit behind. So now I do get a vortex. And this is a big mistake. I send my stalkers back. Uh, th when they should have been blinking down there, sniping those three uh, pool lords for free. And now I, tr I tried really hard to send those archons into the, into the toilet. But he sent infested Terran eggs all around it. So because of that, I wasn't able to, to do that. And basically, he lost nothing with this first Vortex. So now I'm losing my mothership. This Vortex is going to do nothing. And I find myself having only Stalkers against, ar against an army of Woodlords and Mass Infested Terran. I think uh, 28 Infestors right now. And I was like, really? I'm, I'm going to lose this? My upgrade still not finished at the time. First Reflex after losing a mothership, remake it immediately. Why did I make it? Oh, there. Okay, bad choice, actually. I make it here when I'm about to lose this fight. So I'm slowly losing this fight. I tried to pull out of it, but he still had a couple fungals left. So I'm going to lose this one Colossus. I tried to get a couple kills before that. And uh, yeah, it's just basically spamming infested. Turn X. In the meantime, I did a good move of sending one of the war prism here. I think I just made it and rallied it here out of the robo. And uh, I'm going to be able to take down this base pretty easily here with that. I still have kind of, uh, I mean, a couple units that I can make, but not too many either. So now I'm, I really want to get this mothership out before I fight again. But I know his army is not too big either. It's basically all these infestors plus like four bullets maybe. So now I noticed there was... Uh, those overseers out of position. Uh, he has eight broodlords, okay. If I can kill those eight broodlords without losing all my units instantly, I won. Because just because all those infestors, they cannot fight against a, a decent sized army. If my army was really small, they would win, obviously. But against a decent sized army, no. So now, same story as before. I will uh, try to attack from two sides. I warp some units here, but it's really to tank those infested so that not, not everything dies too fast. And now I choose to go for it. 
I start getting some storms off and you can see I even got the infestors here for some time which was really good I got both the lord and the infestors and now like I said I really need to snipe those lords. and I do just that and in the meantime I can keep on warping I got a like I said a bit of a bank even if it's not the biggest and uh, once I've killed all those poor lords I basically automatically automatically win uh, he just used all his energy he's completely out of cash I mean how much does he have got maybe like 600 minerals left in this base that's nothing so that's that's all the units he had basically 13 infestors three zerglings and seven corruptors those don't even have that much hp and i have all of this and i can still warp couple units so yeah this was completely over but uh it was a very hard game just because of a couple mistakes like here the bad engagements i took uh bad concave and bad mixing as well i uh, got way too many stalkers i should have scouted a bit more figured out that uh, he was going for only infestors and only boot lords and then i could have made way more uh, templars i think and uh, it would have gone better for me i think but other than that wasn't too bad i guess uh, not the best not the worst vortex so very important things to note all the timings i mentioned the sim city here walling off very fast uh, you can do this third base with basically any build you can go for four gate and robo even if you feel uh, unsafe or you really want to trick your opponent you can take it a little bit more late do like six gates and a robo try to move out on the map a little bit and then in the meantime you make this base but very important thing to do clean all the overlords around here uh, usually if you go robo you make an over uh, an observer you kill the overlord over here potentially over here sometimes you will have one here sometimes one here uh, or do a war prism harass and in the same time you can take a third but uh, yeah very very important points covered here the also the wall around the nexus protecting me from zerglings the scouting with this overlord that was here the entire game could have seen anything go down there uh, i did react very slowly to the zerglings but imagine for example he had sent like 10 infestors down there burrowed uh, i could have just received him here and killed all of them so now it didn't end up happening but sometimes it will and uh, the war prison play very important you should start dropping pretty early uh, you, i wouldn't do it on two bases you need to have at least three bases and a very good economy beyond just around 70 probes and uh, once you start sniping all those buildings you can get a good advantage that will really help you lower the upgrades of the zerg like we can see in this game where, where are the zerglings actually okay 3-2 but it was 2-2 for most of the game uh, i think the ranged units that would be the infested turn were 1-0 does he have an evil somewhere Okay, I can't, I can't actually see how we come back a bit. Uh, there were actually two. Okay, so he did get some upgrades done toward the end of the game. But for most of the game, I know that those infested turn, they were uh, only 1-0. And that's very good for me. I mean, if you can be 3-3-3 three, three, three or in this, some upgrades in these waters, uh, it's going to be very good for you all the time to fight against lower upgraded units. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this time uh, this video should be posted on the root gaming channel so this has been my very first strategy video don't hesitate to leave me some feedback in the comments or on my twitter which you will find there if i can point right yes or on my facebook uh, you can follow roots actuality at www.root-gaming.com and uh, twitter.com slash root for root Thanks to our sponsors, Das Keyboard, Twitch.tv, and Rush All the Tees. Peace.